So he spent the time to cut the metal out, weld it in, do some body work on there, guide coat, get it straight, paint it. Three months later, you got this. So the discussion is, does polyester filler absorb moisture? The reason I ask that is because uh, you're putting it over a stitch weld bead and it may not be uniform. Yeah, you may overlap 50% of each of your spot welds there to create it, but there may be some thin areas above or below that weld where from the backside moisture can enter. If you can get to the rear and seam seal it, that's the best thing to do. But there's areas, as we all know, where you can. For example, that the bedside there on that truck, I can't get to the rear of it. Or if you're doing a, a repair on a rocker. So we're gonna do a test here. We have some premium top of the line polyester filler, and we also have Duraglass, fiberglass fill. So what we're doing here, we're gonna just get a dollop on there, approximate equal size to both of them. Mix them up as per recommended instructions in there. And then we're gonna weigh them, put them in water for 24 hours, bring them out, dry them off and reweigh and see if any absorbs moisture. So this part here is going to take a little time, but I didn't want to just uh, do some magic video and go to the end result and you guys are all doubting me. So <clears throat> use the uh, accuracy of our warehouse scare, scale here that's calibrated. And what we're going to do is get these things to the exact same weight. And the weight is in ounce that we're using right now. So I'm going to fast forward this video a little bit, but you'll see between using some tin snips and files, we we're able to get them dialed in just perfect. So the polyester filler is obviously lighter than the Duraglass that has the fiberglass fill. So you can see it came in at 0.7424 of an ounce. So now I'm just gonna keep nipping away at the Duraglass chunk here until we get the exact same weight. So it took a little bit of time here, but we got them both at 0.7424, dead even. So we have two containers with 15 ounces of clean water and we're going to submerge both of them in here for 24 hours. So here we are after the 24 hour soak. We're going to remove them, dry them and then proceed to weigh them. So they're removed, we let them air dry for a little. We're going to go ahead and blot them and then we're going to use 100% compressed argon at about 5 psi to gently blow and remove any residual water. Back at the scale, you can see the Duraglass is 7424, just as it started. We'll remove that, let the scale zero, and then apply the polyester piece. And you can see that's 7456. So what did we learn? Well, the polyester did absorb some water or moisture, 0.0032 of an ounce over a 24-hour period. What does that mean? That's not a lot. Is it enough to cause bubbling like this over a three-month period? Possibly. So I think we do have a conclusion here, and let me talk to you about this. The best use of Duraglass is, as you see here, applying it over the blended weld bead. If there are any existing pinholes, you can rest assured that it's covered by a waterproof coating. Then you go ahead and use your premium polyester filler and do your body work on the rest of the panel. Duraglass is a bear to sand. You don't want to be doing a lot of it. So if you're using a premium filler such as that Evercoat to do the skim work over the rest of it, you'll have a very nice professional job and uh, great end results. You know, what we're trying to do here is the best prep we can do underneath the paint so we don't have any of those bubbling or issues three months, three years, or even 30 years from now.